You would think that I would get audio right after all this. Well, I can, I can see how, you know, being fresh on your mind and just being shocked and alarmed uh, th that you would, you would talk about it. But... But I don't think it's a good idea to release audio giving other people press that you really don't like and you but but see it was important to talk about the example <clears throat> of being um yeah. you know looked at like you don't exist you're illegitimate and and you know by people that let us help you we'll appoint a hack writer to you who you know and and then you can tell your story obviously we just made the exact decision or i did to uh not go with a well look i don't know you know i can tell you right now how many there are there's you know uh one two three four five six seven eight nine okay there's about um i i'm if embarrassed to say this there's about um maybe 20 or 20, 22 hours of audio that is not ex acceptable to me, to God, to something. I mean, didn't make it. It makes me feel really defeated when I prepare for an audio and I prepare the day before and then at night and then I open the recorder and I go ahead and speak and it's not acceptable. I think, you know, I, you don't see that, that kind of editing. But there is a, a governor here, there is an editor here. And the editing is, you know, when I guess when I get self indulgent, which must be a lot, when I become um, uh, triggered from the past things and then I'm kind of, you know, jumping around, uh, that doesn't seem to fly too well. I have to be more even handed in that because, you know, technically, you know, where is thy sting? I talked before about you know, gang stalking, and I was talking about these con artists that I know. And they're on the internet as, you know, radio hosts, and um, in one case, uh, an internet company that provides platforms for companies for better content management and distribution. <laughs> right? Sounds good, right? It's only just websites with software that doesn't work. It's all, it's all a dog and pony show. And uh, I've seen this guy get into, you know, governor's offices. I've seen him put on presentations with a TV screen that's, you know, um, you know, a thousand feet long that has to do with uh, uh, having a meeting and having content streaming in and out of the meeting and, and having an audience and all that and then speaking before audiences and all, you know, and then directing films and all this. But the, all these guys have something in common. I knew this guy before because uh, I was... I'm not going to mention anything about a name, but I knew him before because I was um, called in by my friend Mike, the, the movie producer, to rewrite his script, okay, to write along some no ideas and notes because the script was, because they were going to shoot it, they said. So I got paid to do that. And then I met this young guy. He just got out of USC or whatever, um, USC Film School of Cinema, which is very prestigious and all that. Um, so he said, okay, so he said, and this script kind of focused on a fraternity or something. I mean, he must've been in a fraternity. I, I don't really even know if he graduated. I, I just know that the, the, the bios on the degrees and letters after people say they get embellished and embellished. This is a guy that tried to take a company public and then, you know, I don't know, it, 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 it completely failed. Um, he can't, you know, he's tried to direct movies and music videos and things and he, he's okay, but kind of not really very interesting. Um, it's all just been smoke and mirrors the whole time. It's all been like this long ongoing con, even, you know, he'll have the, uh, the team of, of his, uh, software and tech company. Okay. And he'll have all their pictures, but then you realize they're not all you know, they're working in the offices as the team. You, you know, you realize that it's all just basically uh, back to another startup, pick up and move, go to another city, get, you know, get funding, get in, you know what I mean? If, if start off in Los Angeles and, and then move to, you know, in this case, moves to Utah, gets all this going and says, well, we, 
when that tech thing pulled back and all that product, he started off in porno, doing porno uh, copies of, por you know, making DVDs of porno films for distribution. So he had to have an inside contact. And that happened to be someone living down the street from me out there who was setting up cameras to spy on Trish and me. Okay, makes sense, the guy with porn, you know, and, and trying to get in our bedroom. And then the neighbor participated by cutting trees down, and then there was a camera placed there. So all these people were in on this thing. <clears throat> and pure evil. And even my own mother says, well, how are you feeling? You see, and I explain, she goes, I know what happened. Knowing that all this is going on, which, of course, eventually, you know, I we left the neighborhood. We were kind of driven from the neighborhood because of the fact that they were all sort of participating, um, or most everyone, in um, stalking us, entering the house when we weren't there, putting cameras and things around, following us around, you know, the white vans following around. I mean, you know, that kind of level. We we actually handled it pretty well. I mean, I they had uh, this guy bringing drugs in as well, and there, there was a problem with that, which got cleared up later. But, I mean, that maximized the... Um, the vulnerability that we were under. So we were, we were definitely under complete attack from every front. And then, of course, all the people that pretended to be friends were actually doing the stalking. And then they come in like your friends and say, hey, what's going on? How are you feeling? Hey, what's happening? While they're doing it. If you haven't had that level of, of stalking, you haven't really lived. It was terrible. I mean, it was a long time ago. But it was... Uh, I just ran in... I see this guy on the Internet. And, and he was... Like I say, he started with the porno thing. He actually dropped out of uh, school. I don't know that he went to USC school. Said him, I don't think so. It, he just, it's just that, and there's several examples. I'm going to get to another one anyway. So, so I re I figured out that he was the one, you know, that that, that he was, in, you know, producing this nightmare of of me being under their surveillance and Trish while being friendly to us, and then and then you know ask well, ask yourselves, well, why would they do that? have all these cameras. I don't know. You know, I think they're attracted to evil and that's a really evil. And so when you organize against someone in the neighborhood, I think it's very exciting for them. You know, think about it with your kids. You know, they were there, you know, get the cameras, get the, you know, so they went on and, and we kind of overcame that. I mean, in some way, although I was a mess because at the same time, what this is crucial. What you have to understand is there was a heavy witchcraft component to it. There was another kind of a famous guy that was involved who, you know, and, and what precipitated it was I had my encounter with the Lord and I totally gave my life to the Lord. I got rid of art, you know, kind of new agey art and kind of artifacts that I had that were, you know, probably evil, Tibetan masks and African masks and different things. It just had kind of a, you know, it just didn't feel right. So... We were going through that, and I was preaching a lot, Jesus, 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 you know, and, and, and it seemed like that's what really stoked it up. It seemed like that's what really caused, the, it was like the baseball bat to the hornet's nest. So it's not like I said, well, why would they do that? Well, I precipitated it with my, I wouldn't stop talking about Satanism. My eyes were open, I realized what I had known as a kid was all true. What they tried to brainwash me out of was all true. And as I started waking up at, and, and, and waking up and then realizing all this and then realizing it was all true, uh, then I could see all these people came out of the woodwork. It was like the whole neighborhood. It's like the, the, the story of young Goodman Brown all over again, and I'm playing the part of Goodman Brown. Or race with the devil. And, you know, the whole town is in on it, but me, right? It's, it's that sort of thing, and, and it's terribly frightening. Um, but the most... And then the guy across the street was in in the it's a Pakistani that was in the CIA, who had an infrared on top of his roof plus cameras that were mobile, so he was infraredding us, you know, or microwaving us or cooking us. From and I saw it once. I mean, you don't always see it, but I was a one 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 night. I actually saw it up there, and it was really uh, infrared that he was trying to look through the house to see. It'll give you a heat signature, I think. What's he doing with that on his roof? You know, I mean, it, and it goes on, and I, I could name a, a whole other. Uh, there were a lot of things like that, and lots of, lots of things. So many I can't mention them all, but I just give you a little taste so that you understand what kind of, um, what kind of thing this was. So this guy, 
who turned out to be this kind of con artist on, on the internet, you know, and, and he had even con <clears throat> Glenn Beck into thinking he was the next Steve Jobs. <clears throat> Producing this show, right, and, and in collaboration with porno producers um, uh, that are in the neighborhood and getting everyone to be in on it, was uh, even my own mother knew, knows about it. Then they all sanctioned it because no one would stand against it. But how do they all know about it? the whole network of Los Angeles? How do they all know? Well, what is? It's because I got real loud about what, about the Satanism, about the pedophilia, about all the stuff in the past, about what I confronted my mother on when in 1992, I had a, 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 a retrieved memory through a, a strange encounter with a demonic encounter and. You know, in the form of an alien, an actual alien being appeared in the room, and 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 it was just frightening, so frightening. I, I couldn't even. But in that experience, there was something triggered, and there was this memory of 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 uh, um, adults and you know having sex with children in a ritual, you know, kind of uh, format, which was you know I would have been about four to five years old, and. Um, you know, obviously there was a trauma there. And she had broken down just screaming and, you know, just like a complete breakdown, but then later went back into denial on it. But, you know, confirming it. And, and it was, you know, it was just over the top. And I'm like, wow, how did I, you know, think? Because I couldn't re remember anything like that before, but then suddenly, the, you know. And that got all tied in with <clears throat> with this whole thing, the gang stock, the Satanism, the, 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 the thing that happens in the gang stock and what... what hurts people besides they could be slowly being drugged or whatever is really um, the witchcraft. I can't emphasize that enough. So when they come move things in your house, the reason they do that is because they're using it to do a ritual over to, 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 to trip you up, to, to, uh, to put a great oppression on you. And they're, and these people would show up. I one time sat stealthily by and watched while, you know, these, a group of these women, they look like maids would show up. And they, you know, uh, were you know, going in the house and, um, you know, there were, uh, I don't know how many bugs there were in the house, but I mean, it was all, it was just like something out of a James Bond film. So that's my testimony about that. But the most important component is that it was uh, being orchestrated by witches, not by this guy necessarily. I mean, he was a big part of it because he was like a producer, you know, but and so this was a show, right? And we, we were the unwitting target. But witches that sneak in and put little things in your house and have spells and things, and that's the biggest component of it. And in all the people that say they're TIs, they've been through this or that, they don't realize that witchcraft or spiritual component, that magical sorcery component, the, which is the, the, the that, that's the thing that makes that, that that drives the people into total you know fear panic or whatever but during this time i had the lord and no matter what they threw at us and they threw everything in the kitchen sink we just kept rising above it i had one gal there was like we got this new cleaning woman she turned into a demon in front of me and then she turned her head like linda blair in the exorcist and looked at me it wasn't her it was something in her staring me down from across the and then if i moved she the stare would follow like a predator and it was just insane, just insane. And then we saw, you know, we saw a glimpse into another dimension and there were other people there and there were like little winged, you know, reptiles flying around in the air. And it was just insane. I mean, beyond, but without that other dimensional component, without understanding the witchcraft involved, without understanding the full on assault in the occult realm, you can't understand how this thing gets going. But one thing is for sure, I kept saying the name of the Lord. I mean, I kept falling down, you know, because I, I, I was, you know, I was uh, in a state of, uh, I wasn't as disciplined, let's say, as I should have been. So I kept getting knocked down, but then I, the Lord would get me back up. And he would inform me about all my life, about all the incidents that ever happened that I had thought, well, maybe I was mistaken. Maybe I was just, delusional, maybe I was paranoid, you know, I, you know, you know, I'm sure you've done that too, uh, confirmed it all. And then I said, Lord, who are we? Trish and me, that this, 
And it's like, you know, you're mine. And this thing that's going on wouldn't be happening had you not mentioned Jesus and, you know, had the thing at the church not gone south. And all that didn't work out because they're, they're playing a con game at the church. That's not real, you see. They're not for real. So they all are all amassing to jump on you and snuff you out, which gives them a great deal of excitement, especially when they're chasing you and trying to make you paranoid. Well, we didn't get paranoid, ladies and gentlemen, because we had the Lord. I did reject a number of people that I realized they were just Truman showing me, you know, that, that, that they were coming in and saying, hey, how's it going, Zeph, while being part of the team that's messing with us. I mean, that was, uh, during this period, I wrote the book Lamb. Uh, I went on live onto the internet, okay? And then eventually moved the F out of Los Angeles. Uh, I think that was probably a pretty smart move. I know they were really mad. They, it's like, you'll be safe there. I hate that. And we're not safe here. There's no safety anywhere on the planet. This is the spiritual battle. Again, it was almost like it was just it was just slumbering slowly, percolating under the surface until Jesus came into it. So I want you to understand, and that power, Jesus, that power of the Lord, and this is the real Lord now. This is not the Lord, the theoretical Lord you get when you, you know, a lot of people read scripture and they say, oh, the Lord was showing me this. Or so. This is, no, no, this is full on, man. This is like, uh, you know, 2,000 people against two, okay? This is right there, got me by the scruff of the neck, and it just, and then there was all these revelations going on and on about who I am and what happened and this and that and where this is going and, and it, but when to get out of there, what to sell the house for, how much to sell it for, where go left, go right, go straight. It was on that level. I don't know. You know, once you get to the point where you're pretty much pinned down and surrounded as we were, and all this is under the color of law, you know, there's no one really getting caught doing anything. No one's reporting anyone. I saw some of it because I snuck around and I'd, I'd sit down in the car and I'd watch people going, you know. I came in to find I had a, a, a pistol and, you know, I'd always left it uncocked and with the, uh, the magazine out, you know. And uh, there it was, magazine in, fully cocked, one in the chamber. And it's the kind of gun that, you know, if you just flick at the trigger a little bit or drop it, it could, right? It's real easy trigger. So I'm like, okay, this is this has now gotten into the realm of serious. So I would, you know, I was very grateful. I was very grateful that that I had a, a firearm at that time. I think that actually helped to uh, to to back people off, uh, which was, you know, um, otherwise. Um, well, I mean, you know, that's that's the thing that kept. Because there was a there was like a real nasty element to it too, but I mean, you know, meaning that there could have been violence, and it it was definitely trending toward that. But what got them so angry? What got them so angry at the Calvary Chapel as well? I kept on with the Satanism. I kept on about satanic ritual abuse. I kept on because I was getting the revelations from the Lord. And I was saying, "Hey, this is what the Lord's telling me. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this." And they were all, you know, becoming predatory, angry, attack dogs because I was talking about it, real issues. They wanted me to shut up. That's how we determined that the church was involved in all this stuff. I mean, they'll, they'll never get blamed for it because they're protected by the society. So they, they were, just like with Hampstead and everything else, they'll never be, you know, the Calvary Chapel, it's a, it's a big brand name. They will never be under anybody's scrutiny. They do a great job for, you know, controlling people, right? And it's all basically a it's a hot it's a hot spot for all all the spooks and all the spies and every you know everyone you know creating dossiers of you know, keeping track of people. It's just a hotbed of all that. I knew that back when I was seventeen when someone took me to their Costa Mesa revival, and to me it just seemed like they were all double A. You know, I just didn't trust them, and I just get me out of here. I don't know what possessed me <laughs> to try going back there to do a church setting because I knew that I, but I, what I didn't know was I didn't know that they were involved in witchcraft and all this other stuff. I mean, all this stuff, I mean, it tied in with all the stuff that was going on in our house there. And it was just really weird. You know, um, I saw so many things that I'd never seen and I never really considered, but it was confirming thing. They were so stupid. These people, 
in Sherman Oaks, these people that were at the church as well. They ended up confirming every suspicion that I had got confirmed in real time with witnesses. And then straight out when they got really mad, they would just confess. So I got everything I needed to know about how, the, how everything works from an outsider's perspective, which is impossible, pretty much. And then I realized, you know, oh my God, you know, Lord, this is terrible. If this, if this is going on, our society will collapse. Case in point, let's speed forward to where we are today. You can blame this thing I'm talking about on the entire, this is the entire blame for the entire society. Right here. Any society that engages in all this kind of crap will fail, will cease to exist. I guarantee it. I guarantee it. And it's a rapid decline right now. I mean, and, uh, you know, the, the Lord will boost the enemies of the United States to bring her down into the toilet because that's where she belongs. Certainly, I don't think anyone would argue with that anymore. That's what happens when you, when you, when you corrupt your churches and you corrupt your people and you, 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 uh, you, you, you tell them it's okay to throw their morals away and you, you throw God out, you throw the Bible out, you do all these things and you have a lawless, a spiritually lawless society. Then the next thing is going to go to mayhem, martial law, all those bad things, World War Three, you name it, uh, stuff hitting us from the sky, comets, asteroids. Uh, <laughs> Oh, yeah. There should have been a preacher in that pulpit that could have warned you, but there wasn't. Not even one. Not even one. If there were, I would have found him or her. Not even one. Oh, well, no, if you, you take a guy like that, Pastor Manning guy and other people, they don't count. I'm talking about the official... You know, ba -ba -da -ba -da -da, 501c3, blah, 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 you know. Maybe there are exceptions, but, but not enough to make a difference in America. And just like Obama is touting all his accomplishments and saying America has never been better off, you have the church leaders saying the same thing about their churches. They've never had, they've never had a better year. <laughs> They're all claiming success. <laughs> so... You know, so this producer guy who ended up, you know, he's a hack at that. He tried to then mold himself into this, uh, oh, we got out of it. Um, I was very productive during that. I learned an awful lot during that period. Had I not had the stocking, I would have never understood the way it all works. Especially, though, the witchcraft component, which if you don't have that factored in, you do not know what you're looking at. And if you don't have the Lord, you cannot stand You'll just get paranoid and freaked out and oppressed and, and be hiding and, and terrified is what you'll be. With the Lord, I, I would do things like, um, you know, do like, like, like what God's going to do to the wicked. That, those kind of scriptures right in their face. <laughs> just just as la so loud you could hear me all over the entire up and down the street and laughing my ass off. And, and then they get all freaked out and run away and act like everything's normal. You know, it was, it was, it was hilarious. Then 9-11 happened, okay, eventually. Then everyone got real sober. So it was like, gosh, Zeph, the things you've been talking about are coming to pass. And then they were trying to be, they were trying to be nice toward the end there. And, and, and apologetic, you know, they were kind of in a way apologizing for this organized thing that was like something out of a... Um, Star Wars or something in terms of technology. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and the fact that it has other dimensional components to it and there are beings in other dimensions who are actually running the whole thing. They're in, in concert with the people running it who are the honchos that are producing it. So it's got all that hookup into other dimensions. If you don't have that fa 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 factored in, sorry, factored blah, blah, into your gang stalking scenario, you don't know what's happening to you. It's not just technological. I mean, it is, but it's not. It's that's just a small, maybe ten percent of it. The rest of the ninety percent is the spiritual war, 
And if you don't understand that, then uh, you don't understand what's happening. Why would they just go pick on you? The answer, they have no reason. It's illogical that you would be picked on. Out of the blue by an organized group of people that, uh, you know, mean you great harm but don't even know you. Why would that happen to you? If you haven't been to, you know, just you're kind of a normal guy in society, you know, vote in the election, you, 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 maybe you're conservative, maybe you're a Democrat, who knows what you are. Why would you be picked on? You have to start with that question like I do the hard work that I did. I had to do. Why would they pick on you? You're nothing special. Why you? The only conclusion that a reasonable man can come to is uh, has got to be, you know, uh, a multidimensional spiritual battle. But what do you think the reason is they're coming after you? Yes, number one, you're not one of them. Okay, that's that's a good reason. So who so and that you may be a lost sheep, but you belong to that other guy, the other side, the enemy, which is God. Yes, and otherwise they wouldn't pick on you. You haven't given them your soul, have you? You didn't conform to the hive mind, right? You weren't inducted, initiated, and given your special status. Uh, you, you missed out on all that. Because, you know, they don't induct everybody. You know, the wheat and the tares grow together. So you're not one of them. That's, that's enough to piss them off. That's enough to get them organizing. Which means you may be, belong to the Lord. If that's the case, then they go ape. Okay, so I just explained once again... The, excuse me. Okay, we had a, you know, I'm, I'm doing this a little bit later because I did this one in the middle of the night and then this. Uh, you got to give it to me for uh, hard work because, I mean, this has been really hard, you know. Getting up, trying to do what I thought was my best, being, you know, again, I didn't make it, you know, and I feel like it's the Lord pounding me to do this thing right and I'm I'm, I'm failing and, you know, that's a, hey, but it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. I'm back here again. So in the last 26, seven minutes, you've gotten the whole thing on what it is. You know, please try to keep all that in mind. And that, you know, when, it, when you fly to another state, and they're there, they're, they're, it continues on. Then I think that's proof in the pudding. And hopefully you've had that opportunity to go to other states, other towns, whatever, and it continues on like there's no break in it. Okay, um, that's not natural. If you started talking like that, they would put you in a loony bin and say, this guy's paranoid. Okay, uh, if, you st if you just listed what you observed. The idea that no matter where you go, they're starting in just like they're, they're, they're reading from the same script, that's absurd. Now what you're in, involved in is a multidimensional, uh, high technology situation that is beyond your ability to comprehend, okay? The best thing you can do is stop looking at all the quinky dinks and all the stuff and going, oh no, and getting freaked out. Stop right there, right there. Just knock it off. I don't care where you go in this world. It will continue as if, you know, with just a different group of people, just the same. And that def boggles your imagination and your logic because you can't figure that out. Because you're not meant to figure it out. You know, well, I'm targeted. Who targeted you? The enemy of humanity targeted you. The devil, if you like. But without that component, you, there'd be no such thing as a target. In other words, it's 90% the spiritual battle. You've been targeted by that battle. Now, you say spiritual, on their, but on their side, in their dimension they're in, they have high technology that you don't understand. Same guys that fly around the UFOs and all that. So they, they're, bringing up, they're bringing all that to bear on you. That's why you can go anywhere in this world. You see, everything that's in this world is an illusion. It's a sock puppet that can be moved around. So they can laugh and say, look, he thinks he's getting away. <laughs> Watch this. And they, and they just manipulate the pieces on the board, you know, and they throw them in front of you and they, the same result happens and, and it just drives you to a point of total despair. I understand but you're not looking at it right. So that's why I suppose this podcast exists. You've got to understand it's not comprehensible to you. It's highly technological. 
I, when I say technology 10% here, I mean technology 10% here, but technology, I'm saying the spiritual battle is high tech. It's just to us, it seems spiritual or magical because we can't comprehend it. But be that as it may, all reality here in this life is this matrix, is um, controlled by this other dimension. And they can pull levers, they can make it rain, they can make it do this, they can make it, they can change the history on you, they can move you to a different time, so they can do all this stuff. They can throw people in front of you who just seem to know you. So why would they do all that and go through all that effort? This other realm of beings, why would they do all that to you? It's because you have something, first of all, because you're, uh, you know, potentially um, a threat to them because the rule they have on this earth is all must comply. Every single soul on this earth must belong to them. Okay? Anyone that doesn't comply or somehow bounced off the mirror or just is one of those people that doesn't belong, all these people um, would be, you know, targets of the rest. And um, most people that are, you know, we sometimes call them lambs and things, but most of these people that are lambs of God, you know, that's really what they are. They don't know they are because they're not in religions and they're from different cultures and different backgrounds, but they are your brethren. Uh, the ones who are wearing it on their sleeve a lot of the time are not your brethren. They're th these other guys. Because the, the church is a great, great breeding ground for gang stalkers. I mean, it's perfect. It's total high mind all the way, right? Because everybody's under control of this, this one force, right? Not the, hint, not the Holy Spirit. Well, that's what's wrong with religions in general. You know, it's, 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 it eventually gets taken over by them because they have the majority of numbers on this planet, so they're going to be running the religions. It's really a no-brainer. It's not anything to be concerned about. Uh, suffice to say, there's no, no, there's, establishing a building that you call church and an organization is not possible in this world because of the infiltration that occurs. Just know that from the get-go, and then you, then it's not like you're picking on these people or looking for one over there. It's, it's just the, the way things are. Reread the book of Jude if you like, um, but in every situation, every organization, they will sneak in and eventually take it over. You know that. Now you know that. That doesn't just go for churches. That goes for every organization. There's a certain kind of thing going on here. Right, the inmates, the psychopaths, whatever, run the world. Yes, 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 yes. But it's deeper than that. Once you understand this basic reality that I've level, laid on you, okay, now you can start to do the work of healing and calming and, and stop being feared, stop being afraid. You know, yes, it's supernatural. Okay, let's, let's move on now to the next step. You've got the Lord, 100%, 150%. Something those people in the church, they'll never know how strong you've got the Lord. They, to them, it would be incomprehensible to see your relationship with the Lord. They wouldn't even believe. It's like the one David had with the Lord. You know, that, to be that fierce to run into battle against 10,000 with only 500, but he has the Lord, flings himself into battle. You gotta love those stories. I love those stories of David. The reason I like the Bible so much is because, you know, it shows the real people, flawed people, and how God deals with people, how it all works out in the end, you know. If there's nothing like it. In that Bible, yes, is a supernatural book. And in the supernatural, I would agree it's the inerrant word of God. In the supernatural, of course. But how many people bring it down to this mundane sort of pseudo-intellectual level? I mean, Right. And at, at that point, is it the word of God when it gets dumbed down to that point? Of course not. It's just one big, you know, uh, subjective interpretation by one man's ego, whoever's teaching it. So let's, um, I know there's a lot of coincidences and things that will make you go, wow, that's really something. No other book is like that. Sure, there's a lot of that in there. But there's that in the news. If you look at the news on this, this uh, 
this whole thing about deep impact in the comet, and I have some other comments about, well, the reason I mentioned the aliens, and you could say the demons if you like or whatever, because it's they're all tied in with the Satanists, so I guess that's what they are. The big eye guys, yeah. Well, that's coming back now. The focus on space is going to be, and, and de aliens and all this stuff is going to come back into vogue even more than the 70s and even more than the 50s. So prepare for that, folks. Prepare for that, because there's going to be a lot of deception in that. Um, I heard one guy talking today about, uh, this guy is pretty entertaining to listen to. He's very, very secular, not, not a spiritual guy really, but just gives his, you know, and he makes predictions and he's, he's wrong most of the time. And, but that's cool. He's, he, he was, who is it? I, nah, I don't need to say any names. It, but he's, you just, just Google uh, September 24th, 2015. You know, if you want to put asteroid or whatever, go ahead. Because there's a lot of people that have gone back and looked at the movie Deep Impact. And I've had these thoughts too, you know. We got Morgan Freeman as the president, you know, in that 20 years ago. And, and, you know, we have a, we have a, a you know, a black man as president today, right? And they find out about this, um, you know, ELE, this ELE event, which is an extinction level event. And uh, they know about it for some time because they've been tracking this, this asteroid moving in. And, um, or, or a cluster of them or whatever. And, uh, you know, they have things like... Um, just weird little clues, like like he was saying that there was a uh, a bunch of insure pallets of insure, you know, the, the 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 I don't know nutrient drink for people that are sick or underweight or whatever, and and in the insure thing, um, they had a a zip code to Puerto Rico, and then another indication of Venezuela. So somewhere between those two, so there'll be an impact there in the Caribbean, and. Um, you know, then they tie it in with Jade Helm, you know, the idea that at the end of that exercise, they would then be prepared for somewhat event, right? Some event where you would have to have all these things and, and FEMA and all this stuff because of this just horrific uh, event upon the earth. Because if something like that were to happen, it doesn't only take out all the Caribbean, um, it, 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 it affects the skies and everything else, but it also has implications for the entire world indeed could have been the extinction event for the dinosaurs and whatnot you know so so many millions of years ago and um and it wouldn't be the first time this sort of thing has happened so i think you know i, I mean I, I i'm mildly amused at the connections between deep impact and the september 24th 2015 i think those connections are not really put there by man like a guy is in props is saying, I'm going to make sure that this 007 whatever number, the zip code of Puerto Rico, I'm going to make sure that's on that, the, the, the insure. You know what I mean? I don't think there is that sort of thing. And the same thing with the gang stalking. There isn't this, tr tr there is organization at some level, but, uh, you know, a lot of it is just this psychic link lock thing where they are just told where to go and they just go there and they do told what to do and they do it. Yeah, and there doesn't have to be a meeting behind closed doors somewhere. If there is something like that floating out there right now, you better believe they, the powers that be, know about it and uh, are dealing with it. Remember when we had, um, what was it, not Elanine, but what was, uh, and I did that song. What was that song I did? I-Sun. I just found that so strange that that was I-Sun. And I knew that that whatever was represented by that wasn't over yet. They said, well, it went by the sun and it got compromised by the sun, but many people said, no, it kept, it got weakened by the sun, but then it kept going. Lord knows where. But that was some kind of an omen or some kind of a thing, you know, and it was called Ison, which was very interesting to me. And um, People reacted as they usually do on the internet. I mean, you know, some people thought, oh, there's going to be an impact of something. Other people thinking, no, I, I didn't really think no, but I thought it was some, somehow an important event. And I'm not sure why now, but I think something about it will be revealed later. 
However, this thing that they're talking about, is it possible? Of course it's possible. You know, it's possible that we get hit all the time. Would they know if there was something with a direct hit lineup on Earth that it just wouldn't miss? Would they know six months in advance that it will definitely hit and where it will hit? Yes, they have technology that they would know that. And if that's the case, then they would be um, building this mini underground, right? The Sixth Seal of Revelation. They're, they're digging underground right now to build, right? A third of mankind, poof, gone, you know, all that. Sure, that could be fulfilled in it, I guess, for people looking at that, that to try to bring that in about timing the end. Well, anyway, if that happens, you, you ain't going to be here, so I guess you'll have to come back. Personally, I, I'd rather find another planet. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, you know, sure, um, they'll save themselves and they'll dig underground and they'll have their Elysium under there and their golf and they'll have their, you know, they'll have nice, their chefs and they'll have fashion shows and car shows and they'll have a whole life down there. Uh, but you won't. You're not in that club. Yeah, you'll have to fend for yourselves. But, you know, what happens if there's wars down there? What happens if the tunnels collapse? I don't know, you know. But um, it's nothing to be afraid of, you know, if you're going to go and, and you might as well go in some cosmic event like that. I mean, I, you, know, if, you know, hopefully you, you won't be on the fringes of it where you're just going to be have, you know, half your skin ripped off and just be begging for death. But if that's not the case, if, if you're anywhere in the Caribbean, um, you won't even know what hit you. You know, it'll just be this just a moment of a huge light. <clears throat> and the next thing you know, whatever, you, you, you don't know, right? Wherever you are, you are, whatever, however that is. But I think it's good to keep in mind, I think it's good that people are talking about this. Not, It's interesting, I don't hear the uh, Christians chiming in with the fear porn like they usually do. I haven't been looking. But I haven't, I haven't seen them chime in yet. Gosh, they've jumped on every other potential. Maybe that's because this is really going to happen. <laughs> so the one time it's going to happen, they don't chime in. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. That's delicious, Lord. Oh, man. I, I, hope, I hope you're laughing. <laughs> boy, that's right. The one time it's, it's right on, they don't do it. Oh, <laughs> uh -huh. And a lot of the new age psychics aren't doing it either. You know the the coast to coast types. You know they're they're, you know the remote viewers, right? The, you get the remote viewers in on. They're not in on it. They, right? The, because, you know, a lot of their predictions are just meant to increase their money. Their kind of, and I'm leading that with a comment. I was just talking about the whole gang stalking there in, in uh, L.A. and how organized it got and how many people were involved. I mean, you know, like what thou I thought. Trish and I marveled about it. We said, there must be thousands of people involved in this. What's so important? What's important? The reason it's important isn't because of this dimension. This battle that went on out there was important in that dimension. Because it's important in that dimension, it's going to be important to these people. Because what's important to their handler, their controllers is important to them. Because they have their minds. That's a frightening thing to think, but that's, you know... The way it is. It's not that it's important to your neighbor to, to, to spy on you or to be coordinated with a group or a team. It's because it's important to them. Anyone caught rebelling against them, they're the next target. They're the odd man out. They lose their place in line. They lose their ranking. They lose their ability to make an income. Okay? So they go along. They don't know why. They may not even know you. They don't know that you're a good person, but it's the goal to bring you to, you know, to, to, to participate. I mean, they just, you know, they can't help themselves. I mean, I feel sorry for them. You know, they're, hey, look, they're still stuck there. You know, I, I didn't mind living there. I kind of thought, you know, I liked when, when I lived at the ocean, you know, when I did, I, but I, when I lived inland and, you know, I, I was by Mulholland and, and it was in the valley kind of. That was really depressing for me being there. I think I made a mistake anyway moving into that place, but it wouldn't matter if it was there. Oh, there was nights, oh my gosh, where I would go outside in the backyard. There'd be like a house kind of down the way. There'd be an upstairs window, and they'd be in there just staring at me. I'd look over the side. There'd be 
uh, these people in another house down the way a little bit out the top window, they'd be staring at me. And it, it was like on a certain moon, a certain thing, they were all, I mean, it was like, God, Trish, they're just, you know, they're really doing it. They're just sitting there staring out their windows like zombies, just staring at me, just waiting for me to walk outside so they can stare at me. And um, anyway, you'll be happy to note that I did not, in that particular battle, um, you know, I mean, you know, they want you to know that there's no place you can run, no place you can hide. We're, you know, we're, you know, they're all coordinated. It's a very frightening thing, but if you have the Lord, you know, I, you, you just shut them out. Because they, they, you try to keep them out, they'll come in. You go somewhere to the market or wherever, they're, they're already all coordinated. They're in, they're in your house, they're doing stuff. There's no place, you have no privacy, nothing. They're just all, it's totally evil. These, these people should be ashamed of themselves. But again, are they under control or is it a supernatural? It's a supernatural thing of control. And it's sort of, sort of like taking over the autopilot. You know, that there's, they're on autopilot and then all of a sudden there's, you know, the, the, the guy really handling or controlling them on the computer in another dimension uh, dials in what they want them to do and just like a, a robot, they do it. That's what it is. Go to the window and stare so that they, they all go at the same time and stare. You just happen to walk outside because they're ahead of you in time, so they know you're going to walk outside. Sorry. So, so that's how they get you like that. It'd be great if you guys could all become educated on it rather than just be victims and, and be victorious over it, meaning no fear in your heart because you have the Lord. And live victoriously. Tell them to F off. Just say, hey, Talk cryptically to them. You know, I, I met with this guy, a big-time Christian leader, and, and, and uh, you know, he's on the Internet, and, and all these people give him all kinds of money and go to conferences and all this stuff. He was doing the same thing to me. He was in, in, in it with him. He was part of it. Oh, yeah. And then when I see him online and out, out talking to, you know, the coast to coast and all that, I'm like, you people don't even have a clue who this guy is. You have no, you bring the pastor, yeah, oh yeah, oh bring the Rima, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. I want to know about those skulls and all that stuff, yeah. Totally, hundred percent made man in in the spiritual mafia, and he's got you eating out of the palm of his hand. And you know something? This is really the message today, because we're, we're through that, my bona fides, right? Which Trish and I have tremendous bona fides, you have no idea. We don't talk about all, we, we are now that it's so far, it's like memoirs in the past, but we, we mention what we've been through to help you. Otherwise, there'd be no reason to mention it. To help give you a leg up, to give you some insight so that you can be victorious, so that you can live a victorious life, so you can live without fear, Without, because the one thing you don't want to do is fear or aggression. It's like my, my dog, you know, she's getting over that. But, you know, you're afraid, so you attack. That's the one thing you don't want to do in that situation, okay? If you're afraid and then attack, they, they win. That's what they think you're going to do. And they can bear false witness. They can get you tossed in the slammer. They can do all kinds of things. They can take all your income away. Um, they can they can wreck your life in every way, shape, and form. Make you so miserable you beg for death, and then they'll they'll even help you out with that. They'll they'll leave the suicide weapon for you after they've driven you to it, and then when you finally do the deed, you can't take it anymore. They will celebrate. They'll pop the champagne, and they'll celebrate their good fortune and their and their boost in ratings because they pleased their masters. Because it must be a free will decision to either kill yourself or not in that, in that game. Or join them. Which of course, then they get to kill you because they're never gonna let you join. Because <laughs> you're just born one of them or not one of them, if you know what I mean, right? It's just, it's an organic thing, yes? Are we making ourselves quite clear here? Is this hauntingly clear at this point? Hauntingly meaning you kind of have a memory of knowing all this, but it's just kind of foggy. And it's haunting you. 
Well, this is the reality. People, they whistle by the graveyard every single day in this town, you know, where I am now. I mean, you know, there's no, yeah, right? No, the town, this town or L.A., it doesn't matter. Same thing. I don't, I go to all the cities. I don't keep myself from any city. There's no city that's any worse than any other city in terms of, of this reality. Wherever you go, it's, it's here in this, it's, it's, it's everywhere there are humans, you're going to have this. A lot of humans are weak and they succumb to this thing. And they don't want Jesus, they don't want the Lord, they don't want a way out. The churches are not offering a way out. If anything, the churches train them up all the more on how to be a good little citizen. Anyway, so, and the funny thing is, I would preach to them, you know, and with the idea of them joining us and being, you know, not with hate, but with love. Because I truly loved our neighbors, you know, the ones I knew. And I just was so kind of flummoxed to see them behaving in such a way against us. I, I kind of had a hard time believing it. But I had to eventually get my mind around it. And I never, you know, because I had the Lord, I was able to see everything and move on. Now, so we have this little con artist guy who's involved in all of it, just like, you know, members of my own family and other people, just like, who isn't involved in this? Do you all see it on closed circuit TV? What the heck's going on? Where, where do you people go? Do you, are you from another planet? You know, what the heck is going on? There's other levels to it about people that are replaced, and people that are, in other words, you think they're your neighbors, you think they're your friends, but, but the set has been switched on you, they have that technology too. So they're not really your neighbors and your friends, but they have the same faces and it looks like the very same thing. So you assume that they, they've all been changed. They're totally different than they used to be. No, they changed the dimension on you. I know that's hard. I know that's tough. Beyond sci-fi, I understand. But that's literally what happened. I've analyzed this for... For 40 years, folks. Oh, no longer than that. I've analyzed this for about 45 years. I mean, deep, deep thinking. 45 years of research on this, and I think I know what I'm talking about. Without that alien component, you have nothing as well. That's a big clue. That's a big part of it. Because wherever there's the satanic thing is going on, th those, those little bastards are. Yeah. They're running it, say. <laughs> okay, now, so this little twerp, this little pornographer with his little porno pornographic friend down the street, um, you know, are, are doing all this because they all feel they're going to get a pop out of it. And indeed, then he started getting into, he produced a film, he got into schlock pr productions. So his resume started increasing. He started distributing schlock product as well as a kind of a front to hide the porno thing. But the porno was really bringing in the money because he was part of the distribution. Like uh, these people would make their films and he'd, he'd distribute them. And so he had, you know, he was distributing schlock product out to, you know, video stores were still big then. That all crashed. Showtime, he, you know, you know had their, they, the, the play the schlock at two in the morning, whatever. But he just was, you know, schlocking it out there. All this became possible after this, this whole scenario that I told you about. It all just grew into this, you know, this big, you know, he was, you know, so proud of himself. Well, then that all went bankrupt and went off the cliff because, you know, what happens to people if they don't win? They get tagged. And if, if you're not dead, they lose. <laughs> uh, anyway, so it all went to crap. And... Um, then the distribution dried up. Uh, the The whole thing went to to you know, I think in I think in the bank. I think they tried to take the IPO public even, with nothing to right. And it all went to crap, and everybody threatened lawsuits, and it was all a mess. And the next thing you know, he's appearing as the next Steve Jobs. His resume changes from attended USC film school, which is still doubtful. You can take classes there in the film school, but to get into that is into the school of cinema. That's a whole other thing. Uh, but uh, it, now it's graduate of the school of cinema with an emphasis on technology. And boom, he appears as the techno technology guru, convincing everyone he's the next Steve Jobs. And that worked for a while, and he got some Zoom. And we went to his website, me and Mike. We went to, you know, Mike, who was the producer of the 
film that he was he had written, and then he said he had the money for it, and then he wanted to bring me in for a rewrite, so he did. And, you know, then that all went to crap. And then Mike was, eventually he did do a film, and he did have some name actors in it, and it, did, it didn't do much out there. You know, it sort of failed. But anyway, uh, so Mike and I looked at his website about, you know, as he was dropping the filmmaking, dropping the film distribution, the whole distribution network dried up, all that stuff dried up. And I even had people that produced films I was involved in you know, working on the staff there, and they had their mug, and that all went south, and I don't know what ever happened to them, but uh, but uh, nothing good comes to people that, that are, to behave in this evil way. That's what I'm trying to show you. And then, you know, the, the, that all went to crap, and he had to flee from L.A. and start up this new thing of platforms for companies that they could have television. And so we checked it out. It was like, you know, you could do the, more with YouTube than you could with this. I mean, it was just ridiculous, and already a failure in the making. And um, it's just one failure after another. And it's, but there was a brief period of riding real high on our pain, I guess. But now you see it's all come back to roost. Uh, but that resume has been embellished even more. And I, I did manage to go to a couple of these websites they have about you know different portals or streaming this or that or whatever. Honestly, I, 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 you can't get it to work because it doesn't work. The, the R and D, it's not like it's R and D in Silicon Valley, you know. It's, and, uh, and so he goes out and he and he does these pep talks and he does this dog and pony show, which convinced the the deluded man Glenn Beck to actually say that he was like giving him a pat on the back and and he, and, and all this stuff like he was the next Steve Joe. He actually got that that kudo, but it still didn't. It didn't gel, and he got it from the governor, and he even moved to Utah. And for the last couple of years, there's been like it's just been real dead. Oh no, he'll emerge again. He's a there'll be another grift, getting investors in for the for the next big push. Yep, and these guys keep going. You know, no, I don't want him to crash. I'm not not on my account. I'm just saying it goes for a while and, you know, the grift fails Then he's got to start something else up. A bunch of people get burned and then he starts up all, all over again. And I've seen him do this several times, trying to take these shortcuts. And if you look into his eyes, you realize he's the same guy as my friend from, uh, from, from prison. Uh, people I know that are sociopaths, they have the same eyes. It's, it's amazing. It's the same eyes in every single one of them the same exact eyes. They're kind of pale blue, sort of, I can't really, there's a deadness there. It's really hard to explain. There's a certain look. I've been around a lot of people from prison, and, you know, and and a lot of people from, from, from all that. I, I, I understand, I understand. They can be very charismatic, very very magnetic, drawing people to, to them. It's amazing. Kids love them, but there's this other, I can see it, okay? And that's what, where, where they get really upset with me. I can see it. You know, I dare say I would love to get the, the eyes of three individuals and put them all together and show you what I mean. But I, I, maybe that won't be able to be done. But anyway, so I left off there and I just, I felt like, I, I don't know what happened to Mike, the producer. I, I would love to call him up and say, what the hell is this? And how did that, the resume, and then I turned to another guy who was around about that same period of time. It was, you know, eventually when there was a falling out because we've, again, screaming Jesus, right? Screaming Jesus. Got that going on. And then all of a sudden we had to get rid of a lot of people. And then they were like throwing death. That was just not, you can't do that. <laughs> Tried to leave town. A famous actor that we knew that, that I had been involved with, uh, I didn't realize, I didn't know that my leaving L.A. would upset him so much, you know what I mean? I was like, you're not handling me, are you? <laughs> you're not, are you going to lose something if I leave? Because the way you're acting, it's like the whole world's falling apart. So there's that, okay? There's that aspect of the game as well. And, um, you know, and, and again, there shouldn't be a game. People shouldn't play it. 
but it does attract these sociopaths because at the game, the best people are, don't have a conscience. Okay, they are the sociopathic types. They're the ones who thrive in this environment. Anyway, with this other fellow that uh, would would send would, would he do things like because you know, he's a sorcerer, he would do things like he would send uh, some kind of thing that looks like a card, like a thank you card, and you open it, it'll be some death curse that you're supposed to die upon opening it. <laughs> Didn't he remember that Trish? Yes. He'd sent like three of those. Nice guy, huh? Oh, you all think he's a nice guy. He's another guy on Coast to Coast and the radio and all that. Oh, you all, uh, well, the world loves him. Are you kidding? You don't see the real deal. But I noticed his resume, too. It suddenly increased after he'd gone through, I don't know, and this, and this and, you know, you, some of you who may know who it is I'm talking about, that's fine. Keep it to yourselves. I, I'm not going to mention any names because I don't want to glorify anyone or give anyone press in any way they don't deserve it. Uh, this is a guy that bilks people out of like, you know, six, seven million dollars of, because he was like the psychic investor and he could invest in everything, you know, he, he was never wrong. And he just, you know, they just used it as a slush fund and filed for bankruptcy, <laughs> you know. And then it's okay, and now, and now other people that I've been somewhat tangentially involved with who would who would kind of behave badly, and I'm not going to say really much more about it than that. I see how they've coalesced in this group, and the, the, this is the group I call the New Age, the New Agers. You know, they have their conferences, the New Life Expos, the UFO conferences, that group, right? And then there's this other group, which is that I've also had some interaction with that went just as badly, was the, uh, the, uh, the, the End Times Bible Prophecy, you know, the, 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 the people that are working on satanic ritual abuse, they'd love topics like that. You know that crowd, right? The, the, they're warning you about the technocracy and the rise of the machines or whatever. Whatever, whatever cockamamie thing they're doing, they're related, but they're identical, but in another wing. So you have that circle over there. You got this circle over here. And what I've noticed is on these resumes, like I say, these resumes, how they keep, well, in the case of this one guy, he's, that suddenly they go by doctor, right? Some doctor thing. And then all of a sudden I noticed there are more degrees, like not just, uh, again, we're dealing with Southern California, so not just the USC graduate of this or that or the other thing. Uh, then all of a sudden there's degrees added from Stanford University, which never were there back, you know, eight, ten years ago. That was never on the resume. But supposedly those degrees would have been finished back then, so why not mention them? No, now they're being mentioned, as if they can't get caught. Now, I mean, I mean I'm, look, this was cursory on my part, and I just busted the guy. On, I, I figured, well, someone else is going to figure it out, right? Not on your life. The, the griff, these are, con, these are professional con artists. They're good. They talk a great game until you break down what they say or until you try to line up the predictions of what did come true. You know what I mean? But I don't want to waste my time. Professional psychics and all that. A lot of them are con men. It's a grift. And, um, you know, just like the, the scamming people into get, putting all their money into uh, to trust this guy to put in the, 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 you know, to have his psychic predictions in the stock market to make all these people millions. Haha, <laughs> sucker. Was just, it, when you have no conscience, you just, you don't even think, you have no anxiety about using that as a slush fund. It doesn't even occur to you to be anxious about it, that someone, something might happen, there might be a consequence. Right? That's a certain... Purse type of person, and these people I've known, they're 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 all over the place. Um, but then when I see these degrees advancing, and then then titles of doctor, like wanting to be called doctor, start coming in, I've I look at Trish, I look at Trish, and I just say, Trish, can you believe now there's these advanced degrees or these degrees from Stanford University? How did that get in there? That's like a new, you know, and then they try to change their rep repertoire. Anyway, these are the uh, whole life expos, new life expos, new consciousness expos. They say expo, you know, you know, we, we, I used to go to all those things. That's how I met a lot of these people. I went there looking for answers, like a lot of people, especially back in, you know, say around the, the, the early to mid 90s. And I got bored with it after a couple of years because I realized it, they, they don't know, they're not telling the whole truth. For example, on gang stalking, high, they don't talk about stuff like that. That'll never be talked about. 
So we don't seem to be getting the truth out of them completely, but they want to tell a story about the moon or the cover-up of NASA. They want to talk about um, how the psychic year is going to go for the Earth. What kinds of things, you know, make predictions on what kinds of things we're going to see. Leading a meditation, uh, spiritual meditation for people. Going on cruises and having everyone go on a, on a paranormal cruise for, for total enlightenment, you know. You know, they book it, they, they, whatever way they, they confabulate it, it's all, it's all garbage, it's all fake, it's all lies, right? You know, it's raining right now, I feel so blessed, rained all night. And uh, yes, the latter rain is falling, that's why there's such clarity on this podcast. It's because of the latter rain that was prophesied. And it's here now. Isn't that great? Just a little tidbit like that out there. That no one's gonna no, no the professional Christians would never believe that, of course. <laughs> and certainly would never believe that, you know, any kind of uh enlightenment would fall on me. <laughs> and I've just had to it's okay, as my buddy says, Zeph, you're never gonna get credit, you know that. It's like, well, why don't you finish the sentence and tell me why? can't do that. Ah, well, you don't have to. Seems it's already been figured out quite nicely. Thank you. It seems like the not get credit part or being invisible part, or I was actually told by another person in the same group that's in this sort of new age kind of conspiracy theory, you know, thing. I was told that I would not be able to, and, and the two now, that guy and this other guy, they're now hooked up. They're friends now. Of course. But what is the upshot of it all? Where did this guy's life go over the time? I mean, I look back every once in a while, you run into people online. Well, it's gone nowhere from where it was back when I, I met this fellow. Um, still do it, you know, the radio thing of guests. The same, same scam, same thing. Nothing has changed. There's no growth, except there's a huge lawsuit. I don't know, and a judgment from a court for like $11 million or something that, they, that these people have to pay back. And I'm like, wouldn't that wreck your life? See, if that happened to me, I'd be just devastated. I wouldn't be able to go on like life as usual. Nope, no anxiety whatsoever. <laughs> but no advancement, folks. Wow, it's really it's quite a storm. No advancement, I tell you, okay? So... Because it all goes to crap, then they start it up again. Just like the guy in Utah starts it up again. And it's all connected. It's all interrelated. Actually, it's all interrelated back in L.A. The two guys I'm talking about are interrelated, though they don't know each other. And it, it all, it, it's all this big network. And I just watch all this, and here's what I see. No, they don't get famous. You know, yes, it's raining, Trish. And hailing. And hailing. No, they don't get famous. No, they don't. It's, it's, they just miss somehow. It's so bizarre. It's like they were tagged, kind of, like the Lord must have tagged them because they can't quite, or, but it, it never gets followed through on because they're, I, I, I have a theory about this. Because uh, with grifters, it's all about that short grift. It's not, you know, whatever the, they may have a great idea for a company and all that, but there's, it always goes to crap because there's no plan on following through. It's like once you get the grift over, you have to move to something else. And then if you keep doing that, starting over and over, nothing ever gets built. Right? So, and when they're around me, you know, the whole idea was, you know, control me, handle me, whatever, you know. They have assign an author to me to write up uh, a story. It's like, no, I've already told them, you know, you get you get all my background and bits of testimony and, you know, my, my insights that I've derived over the years. There's nothing really special about my own background except that I was able to see kind of more the rarefied, you know, gentrified, uh, you know, uh, sort of privileged classes and, and, you know, but it's no different there than it is. And it's just the same uh, battle on whatever strata you're on. So, you know, yes, I've seen that. And yes, I've seen it on all those levels. 
And yes, a lot of these scammers, they're trying to get up there, trying to be famous for something, whatever, but they're they're taking shortcuts. And what it is, is it's this, it's this sociopathic thing. It's, 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 it's lack of anxiety when you do things wrong or you get involved in evil like gang stalking. You know, they don't have any anxiety about any of it. It's just, they're great, they got to, it's, it's like Obama describing the, uh, what a great job he's done while Baltimore burns, you know. And it's, 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 it's just, it's incredible. There's no anxiety in that man about anything. So it's, um, I've seen these same people and many of them in prison as well. Uh, I, I don't know why they get to run things. You know, so the, 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 someone put a popular thing out there that says, psychopaths run the world. It's a, it's a colloquialism or it's a, some sort of slogan or something that people say on their signs when they go to Occupy Wall Street or whatever. Um, well, that's actually has quite a rig of truth to it. They don't follow, what I've noticed like with the Obama administration, they never follow through with an issue. See what I mean? They get a hot issue going and then it drifts off to another thing. With, you know, it drifts off to another thing and then another thing. And then it never, there never really is cohesion. There never really is a, a solid plan. It's just get through the next crisis, get through the next day, right? Isn't that it, Trish? Get through the next thing. And, and I've noticed the, the same thing with these kinds of personalities. Anyway, in terms of, of, of you know, running into these people and then having, having people say, well, your life is, you know, you need someone that's really got stems, some hack writer. I said, that, that wasn't the whole issue. I wanted to show this guy some things I had to show him a history of Los Angeles. Not to just rag on it, but, you know, take a little good with the bad. But, you know, through the time of Mickey Cohen and through the time of, uh, you know, the, the L.A. Confidential time, the Black Dahlia, all those, you know, dark time in L.A., late 40s, early 50s, I got all kinds of pictures, you know. That was it. It wasn't, wasn't to go with some hack conspiracy writer. You know, I'm just, I'll just sit on that story until it, I, I have no interest in writing. I'm not that kind of writer, and I, I'm not really a writer anymore. I... I did writing, I think, because I wasn't doing music. And now that, you know, when I got re-wedded with my first love music, with, with what I was really grew up on, I never really had any desire to, you know, and then, and then, and then speaking, you know, this, this is kind of like music. Um, I never really had any desire to go back to writing. And then I've looked at it now, I'm like, no, I wouldn't write a screenplay now. I wouldn't, I'm not going to finish it now. I have no interest in writing. It's really something. I think I did it because I had lost my music and I had lost, I didn't have any way of communicating. And, um, you know, there was, the, but, but it, that was not for, I, I think as, as a poet, yes, that, that may be something I could, I continue to do that, but that's, that's about it, you know. The long novel, no, that's not natural to my spirit, my soul. The, uh, the, the long form, I like seeing movies, but, you know, and I, I attempted to write them, but I, I, yeah, it's not for me, I'm too, I'm too avant-garde, you know, I'm, uh, uh, conforming, you know what I mean? It's just, it's very painful for me to sort of paint by the numbers, you know, and give people what they want. I don't want to give them what they want. <laughs> Instinctually, I don't want to sell out like that. You know what I mean? So that's, so I, I of course, I, I leave. But what I've done on the internet and what I do with my music and what I do with the, the, uh, the, the, uh, the Zeph report is a lot of material. Like if you were an anthropologist from another planet, you'd have a ton of stuff to go through, especially the structural understanding of reality. I cannot emphasize that enough. That is that is the, where where the Zephyr report can be a key for some people. I don't know after me, if the people that are trying to figure it out. Oh, I hear all kinds of people talking about a prison, and you know it's a prison planet, and that the reptiles are keeping us in prison. You hear all these the stuff, but I mean it's it just isn't isn't you can't put it into a comic book form like that. I know a, a lot of you already know that. Uh, as far as this e e Ellie, the Ellie event, the black president, Morgan Freeman, now Obama. And notice I don't, I don't, I don't hate Obama or Clinton or any of them. I, I, you know, I, 
I, you know, I'm here. Uh, uh, you know, they, they can do all kinds of things. You know, people are not happy. The United States is a complete failure. <laughs> the guy's going out. You got to head it to him. Going out and, and touting his accomplishments now with the way things are about, you know, race relations, he's improved. He's improved it for black people. He's, uh, it's, it's, it, I, I worry. I, I worry that maybe he's mentally ill. I mean, for real, you know, for real. So, so delusional that, that, that he's really literally psychotic. He needs to be under, under some kind of supervision. Uh, but but it's kind of cute in a way. I mean, having you know, you know, Rome burning and saying, "Look what I've accomplished." I it's you know, I I I watch. But and the other inter interesting thing to watch is all the people around him who are supposed to be responsible, who are supposed to be adults in the room, how they just sit there and burn all their constituents and and go out to lunch and play golf. I. I really have no idea how all that happens. I, I, I'm an artist. I have to deal with it in that form. I have to make these podcasts more of an art cast and look at it from... Wow, we have such bizarre weather. Hi, Lord. <laughs> That's the way I look at it. Hello, Lord. <laughs> What's happening, man? I'm down here, you're up there, you're down here too, you're in here, I'm out there. I don't know where we are, we're everywhere. But in these cases of these people that I've run into, I don't know why I have to make it, discuss it with you, but there's, I wonder why I come, you know, what are you doing with them, Lord, you know, and they get, I think it's a misnomer to think, well, they got away with it, look, they're still out there. No, 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 they didn't get away with it. These are people that, all of them, talented. No one's going to take that away from them. They could have all really been something, you know, been on the A-list. That's how talented they are. That's how smart they are. That's how talented they are. But somehow it just missed. Like, there's just a cloud there. Something happened. I saw them go up suddenly, a big pop, and then come crashing down. What was after hurting me? Could that be it? I'm not saying it is because I don't want to be so, you know, uh, egocentric on this. But I mean, you know, we all are to a certain degree seeing it from our own point of view. But uh, it just seemed like there was something like that that happened. Then on the other hand, you look at the kind of people they are and you go, oh, see, built in there, 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 there was that, uh, there was that, uh, that, that psychopath thing going on. There was that, there was that built in. So that becomes a limiter. In other words, where they could have gone much further. It's like where, where Obama could have made a big difference in this country, and he didn't. He didn't. He didn't. He made, he made things worse. But where there was a big uh, a potential for some greatness is dashed by this taking, this doing the con, doing the grift, this, this shortcut, taking that shortcut. And then, you know, riding it as far as they could and then, you know, and then a lot of these people do become criminals. I mean, you know, professional criminals in that way. And uh, they populate, there's many of them around this religion business and new age conspiracy UFO kind of business. Okay? They kind of gravitate toward that. And um, all I can say is, where I read comments, people getting so much out of it and feeling so spiritually free. Well, maybe they are, you know, it's maybe they inspire people to become, maybe the people are on their own journey becoming spiritually free and think they, they have to attribute it to these people in some way. If you're spiritually free, it's got nothing to do with other people. It's a blessing of the Lord, period. And the and, and Lord uses people to, to move things around, including can use these people. Not saying it out of hatred, I'm just kind of tying it into the how it's all connected, six degrees of separation, all the way back to the whole gang stalking thing that we went through, which was cosmic, which was vans and high tech and you name it, it was insane. It was beyond anything anyone could have handled on their own. If it happened to any of you and you didn't know the Lord at that time, you'd be dead right now. Guaranteed. Anyone would, any normal man would. 
it it was it was vehement. But see, it wouldn't have even started up on that level had we not been touting Jesus and shouting about the Satanism. That's where it, it and and the the worst perpetrators were the Christians. Anyway, there's these two groups of psychopaths. One is over the New Age thing. They run all that, and that's where the, you go to your New Life Expo and stop by your booth and get your uh, transcendental massage or whatever. Then you have the um, the Christian end times thing, which is just equally as psychopathic. And uh, the, the lies and the resumes and the, the whoppers get more and more and more. It's quite actually stunning when you think about it. The idea that... Uh, The idea that people could, uh, the the idea that the whole thing is a massive con. The 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 experts that are going to give you their take. Now, I know that there was this one panel I saw that had people like Jim Mars in it, and I you know I kind of like him, and you know I had uh, uh, Adam Kokesh and some other people, and I saw this and I'm like, wow, maybe they don't know who's the leader of the panel, or maybe they don't understand, or maybe they're all. You know, I, but there. But one thing's for sure: these panels and these people and the setting up these shows, they want money. But it's more hypocritical, I guess, when you blend Jesus in with it. When it's got this religious thing going on, it becomes more hypocritical in that regard, and more hard to take. Because it's like, oh, the Lord bless. I well, it's on e each camp is bad, right? Each each kind of borrows from the other one. But I just wanted you to know my observations. I wanted you to know that I had that I had figured this out, and I, I have to I have to run. I'm, I'm not sure that the end of this pod is very good because I I've, I've run up on my limit. This is all I could do. But I think it's very concentrated, and I think if you if you well, what many of us many of us have looked at, and we have all well. I'm being invaded now. I I don't think I know. Boy, that's a bark, Dasha. That's great. Have you heard her from a squeak to a bark over the pods? I really must go. I bid you shalom, shalom. Uh, may this be a blessing to you. I, I hope it is. And I, I hope you learn something. And, uh, you know, look, we just got to keep on. Keep, look, God, Jesus, you got to have that. And that's how you're going to live victorious. You get over that fear. Understand, because it's supernatural, you can't figure it out. So, you know, you might as well just drop it and realize Psalm 23. The Lord makes a table for you in the midst of your enemies. And I guess we are all each other's enemies, potentially. And we'll see you next time.